Hi. I wanted to talk about um, Wi-Fi and a few other options, wireless options uh, for connecting people, devices, etc. Primarily in the industry segment. Again, uh, Wi-Fi is popular in multiple segments. I don't think uh, we're going to talk about homes, which is where most of us uh, are these days, as well as maybe in carpeted offices, coffee shops, etc. But specifically for certain industry segments, we are seeing other options. And I would like to kind of look at that particular aspect. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So one of the technologies which has cropped up recently, CBRS, of course, it's currently in its CBRS form. It is restricted to the US, but there are, you can say, equivalent sort of things happening in other parts of the world. Uh, where has it really kind of uh, made a mark? It's in mostly these kinds of settings, uh, some kind of large industrial space with outdoor, indoor, uh, you know, very, you know, you can say wide area with mobility also involved. And this is really the space where connectivity requirements may be not that good with Wi-Fi. And so that's where technologies like CBRS are coming in. Okay, I'm just using CBRS as an example. And it can support voice, video, IoT applications, etc. The nice thing in many of these cases is the spectrum is mostly free, at least for within the premises. And that's one of the reasons why you could often find the name private wireless, which is one of the ways by which people refer to this. OK, and so they cater to a niche, you can say vertical, not uh, alone. Wi-Fi could also be there as a standard technology. Uh, providing connectivity for maybe you can say certain applications, certain user base, and then comes these specialized use cases where you might want some extra things. Okay. And as we said, specifically, if you look at CBRS, it's in a nice uh, spectrum spot. But as I said, there are other offerings in other countries which are opened up for industries very close to 3.5. For example, we have heard some news around 3.7 in a few countries, etc. Right. Typically today they are using the 4G LTE air interface. Probably they will migrate to 5G if things happen according to plan. This is a real nice thing about them. And the good thing is because this is uh, one of these bands supported by most cellular devices, you do find things like phones. And of course, um, the RF can be incorporated in other devices. OK, remember that it's something where you might need a SIM. Uh, you will also need a core network. But there are people coming up with some nice, interesting offerings using the power of cloud, etc. OK, and uh, though I did not mention it, But in technologies like CBRS, what you can find is that you might have some kind of a spectrum access mechanism and so on. OK, but as I said, those are very specific to, let's say, CBRS kind of technologies. If I want to compare it with Wi-Fi, because many people want to put these against uh, one another, and I don't think that's quite apt. I think CBRS comes in to solve some kind of a niche requirement in certain vertical areas, and that will have to be evaluated carefully. Whereas Wi Fi is almost a given everywhere. Okay. Devices which automatically might support technology like CBRS are typically your cell phones. Okay. These days, of course, you can always have a dongle which can add that support. Wi-Fi, remember, comes as a default in all phones, laptops, uh, bulbs, literally speaking, many other things. OK, this remember the extra investment has to be justified for that particular vertical. So it will be a, there will be costs involved both from the network side as well as from the client side. And those have to be justified. OK. Remember that here, most of the employees and guests have devices with Wi-Fi. So really putting access points 
and really not much of a core network as such defined for Wi-Fi. All the Ethernet kind of extensions already we are very comfortable with this. OK, here there is some work to be done if you want to integrate enterprise applications into things like CBRS. Both have the possibility to interwork with cellular service providers. If you look at the other option, which is today on the table, LAA, License Assisted Access, coming from 3GPP, and compare it with, say, CBRS, right, as its form in the US or a slightly different form in other countries. Uh, LAA was designed to operate in unlicensed band just like Wi-Fi. So it's a it's quite different from the normal LTE operations here, um, especially on the client side. Remember, there's no difference as compared to a, say, an LTE phone today, whereas LAA might not be supported in all devices, right? Because it requires a Wi-Fi-like technology um, in addition to Wi-Fi, usually on these devices, okay? So it is, I would say, probably a smaller set of devices having support, okay? Currently, of course, 5 gigahertz is the target. Maybe in the future with 5G and R unlicensed, uh, we might jump into 6 gigahertz, okay? Today, CBRS in an industry does not require any carrier involvement. LAA, as defined by 3GPP, does have carrier involvement, but when it comes to 5G and R unlicensed, which is just released as a part of the latest uh, 3GPP 5G specs, uh, does provide option of not having any carrier connection. Okay. Uh, spectrum is somewhat limited here. As I said, uh, in the US, it's about 150 megahertz. The traction of the unlicensed band today in 5 gigahertz, we talk about 500 megahertz odd, but going up uh, when 6 gigahertz comes up. Okay. So to summarize, uh, I don't think C, uh, the CBRS slash equivalent or the LAA, NRU slash Wi-Fi, um, I don't think they are necessarily uh, killing each other. Uh, and especially I can see that Wi-Fi and the CBRS slash uh, equivalent technology, I think coexisting in certain environments like uh, say industries which require that kind of a support. Remember Wi-Fi is almost a given in these environments. Uh, things like CBRS and its equivalents are add-ons which have to be justified, not going to be used for uh, every application, a few applications uh, with some clear uh, idea of where they will bring in uh, sort of some benefits. Now, what about LAA 5G NR unlicensed? Um, again, it's 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 not that easy to see where they will fit in, but again, uh, they can come in where in the unlicensed band uh, you would like a slightly more scheduled access mechanism as compared to Wi-Fi. So in that sense, LAA and 5G NR U are probably going to compete if people have decided to work on unlicensed bands. Okay, so we'll discuss more in other videos. So for now, um, this is all what we have to share. Um, please take a look at our website and also at Wi-Fi Now Academy for more information. Thank you.